This bad boy right here is the Ace Magic S1 Mini PC, and it has a seriously cool magic trick. Are, are you ready to see the magic? I hope so, because here it comes. Poof! Screen on the PC. How cool is that? Not cool enough for you? Well, check this out. Oh yeah. Hello, hi there, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. I've checked out quite a few mini PCs over the last few months. I, I love these things. I think they are not only a great entry point into the world of PC gaming, they're also just good PCs for the most part. And there's other benefits too that we'll talk about in a bit. When I saw this specific mini PC featured on other channels and seeing photos of it online, I thought it was very cool looking. I mean, it's the one with the screen on the PC, of course that's cool. And even just the general vibe of it is very attractive in my opinion. But I had a sort of expectation of what this thing was going to be like and I was not expecting how small it actually is. In the pictures and the videos it kind of feels like it should be quite a bit bigger than it is. It's freaking tiny. I'm not complaining, I love that it's small and I actually think it's kind of badass that it looks as good as it does at this size. So just be aware that this is indeed a mini PC and it's very cool and I like it. The Ace Magic S1 isn't the most remarkable mini PC out there. It's pretty average in many ways, but its main distinguishing feature is staring you right in the face. It's so obvious. It has a, a screen on the front, which can uh, display the time or the CPU usage and temperature, other stuff. And in this video today, I'm going to show you one of the best things that you could do with a mini PC turn it into a retro emulation console. And I'll show you some other general PC stuff and uh, PC gaming as well. I'll show you everything that you could ever want to know except the picture that I intend to put on the screen once this video is done. Nobody but me gets to see that. This is currently going for just 179 bucks on Amazon if you use the coupon. If you want to pick one of these up, then check it out using the link in the description below after you watch this video. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't done that yet. And did you know that I also have a Patreon page? The box that it comes in is really freaking fancy. Look at this subtle texture, the orange accent, a really top quality box here. They, put, they spared no expense. Also in the box, we get a power adapter. This is a 48 watt power adapter and also a magnetic stand. This is a really solid heavy stand and the PC itself is not heavy at all. So this stand actually works really well. However, I should mention that you can also just put the PC on its side without the stand. There's an instruction book full of words, words about, uh, I don't know, who the hell cares, right? And wait, what? No HDMI cord? Oh, that's bull crap. Now you probably want me to tell you about the specs of this thing, right? No? Oh. Well, uh, well, I'm gonna do it anyways, sorry. The Ace Magic S1 is powered by a 12th gen Intel Alder Lake N95 CPU and integrated Intel UHD graphics. We also get 16 gigabytes of Sodim DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz. Only single channel RAM is supported here though, so that's a bummer. My model came with a one terabyte NVMe SSD with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. And we also get integrated Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Like I said off the top, the device is really nice looking, in my opinion. It's got some nice angles on some of these aesthetic touches that make it just a little more interesting than being a simple box. Around back, we have a hole for our power adapter, two HDMI holes, a dual Ethernet holes, which I know some people are going to be happy about, and a headphone hole. And on top, we have four USB-A holes. Uh, two of them are USB 3 and two of them are USB 2. And we have a power button and a fan vent on the top and the bottom. On the left side, there is a magnetic side panel that comes off to reveal those juicy innards. And as you can see, we have our single 16 gigabyte stick of Lexar DDDDR4 RAM, 3200 megahertz, with no ability to add a second stick. 
and we have two M.2 slots. This bottom one is NVMe and SATA, and the top one is SATA only. The drive that comes included is a one terabyte NVMe drive by Bywin. And then on the front, we have two things that kind of snazz it up. The, the first is an RGB accent bar, which you can control with an app that comes pre-installed. And then we have the screen. It's a really good quality little screen, and you can change what's on the screen using the included software. As speaking of the software, let's talk about the system. We have a fairly standard build of Windows 11 Pro installed on this, but there are some modifications. The first is that there are a few pieces of pre-installed software. One to monitor the CPU data, like the usage and the temperature, and another to change what is displayed on the screen. Those two sort of work together. And another to change the RGB strip. The RGB modes are super basic and the software has to be running, but you can disable the bar if you just unplug this little pluggy plug on the inside. And the screen software is also pretty basic, but it'll let you do some neat stuff with the screen. You can turn on a few different presets to change what's displayed and the layout, and you can also rotate the screen if you have the PC flat on your desk. And you can make your own layout, so you can add an image and choose which info is displayed on the screen. However, I did notice that the CPU monitoring software uses quite a bit of CPU power itself, ironically. And considering that we don't have a super strong CPU, I just decided to disable that software. But I did leave the software that lets me put an image on the screen because this is a really neat feature of this PC and I like that I can make it whatever image that I want. Before we get on to the games, let's do a few quick benchmarks. Starting off with Cinebench R23, we got a multi-core score of 28,000. It's not the best score in the world, but it beats the average of this processor by quite a bit. And confusingly, it even beats out the N100 mini PC that I reviewed recently. I also benchmarked the Bywin 1TB NVMe drive. Here's the crystal disk mark results at the default setting. A very good result for a built-in NVMe drive. And finally, here's a graphics benchmark. This is 3D Mark Time Spy. And well, it's not good, just 364 points, but for an N95, this is really good. And the N100 mini PC that I tested only got 375. So overall, this isn't gonna blow you away, but I am very impressed at how well they optimized everything here. It's doing amazing in the benchmarks considering the components, and that, that's very promising. When it comes to games, I don't, I don't think anyone expected to be able to play modern, graphically impressive AAA games on a $179 mini PC. But just in case you thought you actually could, uh, no. No, you're not going to be able to do that, so don't even bother. This thing won't be able to get these playable, not at any settings or resolution. But just because you can't play AAA games, that doesn't mean that you can't play lots of great games. I'm talking about old games and modern lower spec games. For old games, there is lots you can play on here that'll run at respectable settings. Probably not 1080p high settings, but maybe like 900p low or medium settings, depending on the game. If you're like me, your Steam backlog is overflowing with old games just waiting to be played, and you could totally play them on a PC like this. And then there's new games that aren't that demanding, like uh, indie games and esports sports games. Now, I, I want to keep this realistic. I was watching a match of Dota 2 and at first it looked rather playable, but then I saw this crazy battle where pretty much every character pulling off their ultimate move at the same time and the frame rate just tanked. Not ideal if you're actually trying to play through this craziness. But for the most part, easy stuff runs fine out here. We are in the middle of an indie game revolution. So many great indie games come out every single week, and these are honestly the types of games that grab my attention these days. I play them a ton, so if I had a PC like this as my only PC, I'd be A-OK -okay with sticking to lower spec games because they run amazing, and you can run them at max settings, and there are so many good ones. But the main thing that I wanted to show you here was emulation. This is an entry-level, cheap, low-end N95 processor, and it's not gonna blow us away. 
but that doesn't mean that we can't run some good emulation on it. That's a great use for a mini PC like this because in terms of emulation, it can run a ton of stuff. The emulation drive that I'm using today is this, the Chris Cool Mod Mini Retro Beast. This thing is four terabytes and it's packed with all the old retro games, including a ton of stuff from the high-end systems like GameCube and PS2, PS3 and Xbox 360 and Nintendo Switch. Check out my review of this thing linked below if you want to know more about it. One of the best parts about this drive is the super attractive front end that it has. Look how freaking nice this looks. And you won't have any issues playing any of this older 2D stuff, even the harder to read stuff. This thing is good to go for stuff from this era. And even the old 3D stuff is going to run great. I played some Nintendo 64 and PlayStation and Dreamcast, all working great. This is what it's all about right here with a setup like this. Just easy as heck, set it up, boot it up, plug in your drive and start playing your games. And then on to the higher end stuff. And I was actually pretty impressed with how well we did here. GameCube was good to go. Every game that I tried ran just fine. Maybe there would be the occasional stutter, but that could just be the fact that these are running off an external drive. Same thing with PS2. If you're running at native resolution, you're not going to have any problems. You won't be able to upscale most PS2 and GameCube games, but you'll be able to play them. PSP works a treat. We could go up to 2x resolution in God of War, which, which means that easier to run games will be able to go up to 3x or 4x resolution. And Wii U as well, curiously. It, it ran just fine in the semi emulator. So apparently we can get Wii U now on $180 mini PCs. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? And that'll basically be the limit though. PS3 is a no-go. Same thing with Xbox 360. You're not going to have a good time trying to play either of those because even the easy stuff just doesn't work well enough to be playable. Oh, um, however, Switch emulation actually worked. I'm not going to give this a full pass. It's not running at perfect speed all the time. You'll get some areas of slowdown and some stutters, and this is at 720p handheld mode. But I'd actually call this playable. I don't think every Switch game will run this well, but Odyssey isn't an easy game to emulate and it's working, so I bet you'll actually be able to get quite a few games to be playable. W worth trying your favorite games at least to see how they run. So do I like this PC? You're probably asking. And I'm probably going to answer. Yeah, yeah, I really do. I, I love the performance th that we get considering the chip that we have and I love the look of it, and I love that it runs genuinely whisper quiet. At this price, it's hard to complain, especially because there's lots that this PC gets right, like giving us 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte storage, an easy storage upgrade. The, the built-in screen is cool, and it's just a, a nice looking device that'll look great on your desk or beside your TV. I dig the look of this one a lot and it can play a ton of great PC games and handle a ton of emulation and it'll work well for all your Windows stuff too. It's got it where it counts, you know. If you want to pick one of these up, I'll include a link in the description below. This is currently going for just 179 bucks on Amazon if you use the coupon. And that brings us to the end. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this video where I checked out another super cheap tiny mini PC that I ended up liking a lot. And there's a link on the screen right now and at the top of the description below. And you can go watch it now because we're done. I'm Dekdweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.